Hello, I'm Joseph. This is the Kingaroo KLP1. Now, before I go into how much I love this printer, I need to do my due diligence. And this is just a first impressions, but I'll hopefully go over enough <laughs> to make sure and warn you before you get this printer. So first off, I do not recommend this printer for somebody that is new. And that's because the fit and finish of this printer just is not there. But if you already have a printer, this would be a great purchase if you're looking to print engineering grade materials nearly out of the box and very, very little setup time. If you don't need the panels on, it's like five minutes of taking out four screws and then some time spent on the uh, panel here or the, uh, the little screen that's right here. So let me do my due diligence and get out the way of the cons. So the first con has to do with the filament path to the extruder. That's the best way I can kind of put this. And I say that because it includes the top panel here. It includes the issues, move some of these prints here. It includes the issues with the spool holder and the filament runout sensor and this PTFE tube as well. So I'm going to go through the, um, I guess I will start from the back and then I'll go into the, in the front. So the issue to start with is that the spool holder is not the one that comes with it. This is a print off printables. By the way, everything I'm going to talk about, you can look at klp1.com. It's a comprehensive guide on this printer that talks about all the clipper configurations, all the parts that you can print and other stuff like that. If you want to print an ABS, a guide for that and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, the spool is too high and then the back panel will load on here. It'll scratch the top panel as the spool is spinning. So it's not ideal to have this resting on, on the back of your spool. Then this is too high and it's difficult to feed in. And then as this is feeding in, your filament's normally bent. So it'll hit the bottom of this filament thing. And there's no way to continuously guide the filament through this here. And I have to like twist it around and stuff like that. It's very, very frustrating. Um, I can't wait to replace this filament round sensor, but I don't know what is compatible with that in that regard. So that really sucks. Um, then, after you are able to path it through this and into this filament thing on the um, inside, I'll see if I can show this well. There is right there, there's a coupler between these the two filament or PTFE tubes. So there's a separation. It's very difficult to push the filament through there. Uh, you have to push a lot of force and you're doing that while you're trying to hold the PTFE tube in the back because there's no way to kind of get it. Once you get it through here, then you have to deal with the fact that this has been laying on your PTFE tube and there's a sharp bend in this tube. So you have to like force it to get into the actual extruder. And then at that point, you have a chance of it going straight down or of a chance of it offshooting to one of the sides because the filament's so bent from just trying to get to the damn extruder in the first place. So yeah, it sucks. And on top of that, this screen or this uh, plexiglass panel is scratched. It's scratched from this PTFE tube. They intentionally make this longer to give it a barrier to protect the wiring. Because if this wiring rubs against the, the plexiglass, it's obviously not going to be great. So they, they give you some extra PTFE tube to help guide that. But now you're scratching up your panel. And you're already scratching up from the backside from the filament spool that it'll be resting against uh, when you have this open for a PLA print, which will happen quite often. So that's, you know, that's... <laughs> My major issue, I've already had it come off from the side a couple of times. You have to take off this uh, this metal bit here. And then uh, I had to take some uh, pliers to pull out the broken part and then pull up the PTF E-tube and manually feed it in just to make sure and then put it, put it all back together. It's a big pain in the ass. I do not like loading filament into this at all. The unload filament process is also a little weird in that first it heats up to 220 and does like a, like a 27 millimeter pull. Um, which is really, really short and not enough to pull it out all the way. Then it cools it down to 67 degrees Celsius and does a cold pull, which will most likely snap it. So a good thing about this extruder, by the way, is it's extremely strong. I have tangled filament that I will now print on here because it does a good job at just ripping through that tangle and it'll keep pulling from this spool that's way back here that has all these forces fighting against it. it has a really good gear ratio in terms of torque to be able to constantly pull it. So it'll do a cold pull and pull it out, but... I didn't know that. So we were trying to like tug in on the filament and then I'm realizing uh, it, did, it did another uh, retraction after I got to 67. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. So now I'm used to un uh, unloading it, but it's not something that's really well known in that regard. The last, sorry, the second to last major thing that I would talk about 
is the panel. And it's not like it's a resistive panel that kind of sucks because that is true. That's not really my issue. My issue is that in the U.S. where I got this from, the U.S. warehouse, it needs to ship with the U.S. or the English language. It's the primary language in America. Ship with it. I, I cannot state this enough. You can't ship this unless there, you provide some instructions with the, um, the instructions that's given with this printer. You can't expect someone to know to go to a YouTube channel, go to a, some blog or whatever. You're going to just have a ton of customer support saying, hey, I don't know how to change the language on this printer. How do I do that? You just, you're making more work for your own self when you're, when you're giving this printer to someone and it's not in English. I've seen review after review of review saying they're going to fix that. It's January of 2024 and it's still in Chinese. The last thing I'll talk about is the cutting on these plexiglass panels. They are not cut straight. Some are uh, some uh, like the these uh, top and bottom ones are cut straight, but every panel that is cut horizontally, whether it be the side panels or even the front panel here, where you know there's a big gap here, but then at the bottom here it, it overshoots it too much. I don't understand why um, they did that, and so what I've done for now is I put some painters tape because when you print an ABS, all the uh, the smell of that filament or the ABS starts just escaping out really fast. I mean, it's into a print. You're going to smell real, it's going to smell really bad. I do recommend getting a print tent regardless, but put it next to a window, please. Have some fans to blow it out, exhaust it out um, with that. Okay, so enough kind of complaining because that's really it. I'm very happy with the fact that most of this is open source software. I'm very happy with that. The majority of all these parts are easily sourced, not just from King Roof, but other manufacturers as well. For example, the nozzle is not proprietary. It's just a standard V6 nozzle. You can do brass if you wanted to, or hard steel nozzle. This comes with a hard steel nozzle out of the gate, and it's the kind that doesn't have the filament stick to it. So you don't have to replace it anytime soon because the filament isn't going to get stuck. It's not going to crystallize on it. It's not going to start digging to your prints after like, I don't know, 100 hours worth of printing with that same nozzle. So overall, I'm, I'm very happy with the hardware. I'm very happy with the software experience uh, because it's it's all just very easy and open source. You can learn this from anywhere on the web, learning how what Clipper is, how it works, the configurations. I installed uh, Moonraker time lapse, just SSH into there. They give you the root username and password. Um, just, you know, get clone, whatever else, set up some Clipper crap. And now I can do time lapses on here. I just got to figure out how to mount my camera in here as well due to some type of print. Um, so that's it. I mean, that there's not really that much bad with it. This, this whole filament feeding thing is my most major concern because uh, obviously you're, you're, you're wrecking your top panel. Obviously it's not going to be that important. It does its job, but you're marring it up. Uh, it's not something I can just wipe down and all the scratches actually go away. So let me talk about my prints just for a second here. This is a uh, red ABS from Hatchbox. Um, when I printed this, is, this has a lot of sharp corners. And one issue that I'm, 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 I was noticing as I printed this is that there is a lot of under extrusion at the edges. So I looked into their configuration and they have um, two things uh, that could work against them. One was that they had turned on smoothing time and they did velocity around an angle. So I increased the smoothing time and I reduced the velocity around an angle. Uh, this way, if there's enough time for the filament to actually lay down and it's not trying to make a sharp edge turn like you can see here. I mean, technically, this is still a very usable part. This is just like an aesthetics issue, but it's still an important thing to get. So I reprinted, um, not reprinted, but I printed another version and this has rounded edges, so you're not going to see it that much. It's still a very good print. And by the way, both of these take five to six hours to print. It was an hour and a half on the King Roo KLP one. So very happy with the print times on here. I got a, after I did those changes, you can see that there's just ever so much right there um, in terms of under extrusion, but that's it. So what I did then was I took a print that is difficult to print regardless of the printer. This is not printed on this printer, by the way. This is printed on another printer, the my Anycubic Cobra Go. You can see that the top layers have drag marks from the nozzle um, coming across it and leaking filament or just hitting it. Um, that's because the, the Anycubic Cobra Go cannot Z-hop properly. The back here is another issue where sometimes the filament or the uh, tree support will arc up. This, this back only prints on tree support. Like it's literally printing in the air. So it's very easy to knock it off. And so uh, I did have to do some, some tweaking and some configuration, but I printed this. And by the way, I printed this in Cura. They give you three profiles, Cura, uh, three options for uh, slicers, Cura, Preser 
uh, Prusa Slicer and um, Orca Slicer. This model can only print and cure because it needs mesh fixes and it needs some whole closing stuff. And there is whole uh, closing slicing stuff in like Orca Slicer and Prusa Slicer, but they don't have all the controls like Cura has. So it's nice to be able to jump to different slicers with different feature sets. Um, Cura still has the best kind of like mesh fiction things. You can see that it does still print it a little fast because there's some discoloration here um, versus the top piece. I had a max speed of 60 millimeters a second. This still printed 50% faster than what I would normally print on my other printers. You can see the top or the bottom bit here is flawless. There's no nozzles ripping against this or anything else like that. It came out really, really good. Um, the back here printed out great. One thing I will say is um, don't print in PLA very fast. Print You can probably try PLA Pro or PLA Plus because those can go to higher temps. And here's why I say that. So after I get this all, this was after like a third attempt, after I got it all kind of like um, the slicing settings all perfect, I tried on regular PLA, and this is some white PLA, and uh, I wasn't so lucky with the back here. I tried to pause it uh, to clip some of the tree support because it wasn't printing on the tree support, uh, and I it, it knocked in here and you guys see the print line so i just stopped it um, this was about four hours in versus 12 hours in here so you can see there's a dramatic reduction of time uh, for printing but you, your your mileage is going to vary you're going to have to if you're already used to 3d printing and you think you can just throw any print on there with their default printer profiles that is not going to be the case their profiles are really good for ABS out of the box and the their hyperspeed filament. But if you're just choosing your own filament, do make sure that you understand that there's going to be some time that you're going to spend tuning these profiles. Because like I said, this here printed out great. And this is their stock ABS uh, profile that they provide in Orca Slicer. So again, very, very happy in that regard. Now, I don't want to gush any more about this printer because I'm sure a lot of people are going to crap all over this thing about the things I've talked about. I'll just end in saying that this is a very good printer for the hardware and the software that you get because most of it's opened. Um, I really wish they release another version at some point to address the issue with here. I am most likely going to do a custom riser to have the filament path actually just go through the riser, not actually go through here with some weird coupler, just have a con one continuous PTFE tube going all the way down to the actual uh, feeder itself and then that should hopefully solve that issue and then i'm gonna look into potentially replacing the filament run route sensor while it's not useful for me for most prints it is still nice to have at some point uh, so for me i may just disable it there's a little um, toggle switch in the clipper ui that you can just you know hit or in, in the fluid or main cell browser uh, that you would use as well and like I said, yeah, I like it. I'm happy with it. It's just they did a terrible design for the uh, the filament flow. 